All right, well, we will be building a little bit more onto that uh, combination of gradient and uh, fill tool. Um, here is an example of some beautiful artwork that was created by Dave DeVoe. Um, and uh, he's lived uh, up in the Northern States, um, uh, has had some beautiful opportunities to observe nature, um, Northern lights, uh, grizzly bears, uh, and mooses and elks and whatnot and just great way to um, to then render that uh, in a painting uh, so for instance this one here um, let's take that and load that into dog waffle and uh, see if we can make it snow and actually add some animated snowfall to that uh, but before that also let's use that uh, uh, you know sort of a sunset look uh, Kind of a misty bottom and a little bit more of a reddish tint at the top there are a couple of ways to do that one of them is the f uh, filters uh, under the photographic collection you'll probably find something there it is there's a, a fog filter if you just want to give it a cold bluish tint at the bottom or the sunset if you want both the top and the bottom changed so you can change um, the upper layer area the upper half to a reddish tint and the bottom half a little bit more of a bluish tint there you go okay uh, let's go store that and we might actually need the old image so let's go undo and store that as well so we have a collection of those two images just in case we need to get back to those all right so now we will click on this one and uh no actually we'll, we'll click on this one and see another way to do that or something similar or even more sophisticated and that would be with the linear gradient tool now you remember the gradient tool can be used to draw a gradient something like this Right, and when you let go, you could do the interactive undo, the fade last action, which you also have here now as a shortcut. And guess what? You can go with that and reduce how much of that gradient is actually showing over the existing image. Um, so if you work with the gradients, and there's a way to bring that gradient editor right here, the sweep editor, the gradient editor here too, whichever you like. I like the sweep editor, that's the older style. Um, and what I'll do is I'll get one of those predefined gradients and then and then work from that for instance this one here right so I'll create perhaps a little bit more red towards the sky there you go and a little bit more bluish towards the bottom so I choose the blue channel I reduce the red in there I reduce the green and so it'll be a little bit more of a bluish tint and so now if I'm grabbing that same tool uh, the gradient tool it will be something like this and if I turn it upside down it'll be more like that uh, so with that you can certainly draw a gradient like this and then reduce it to have something like a faded transition but you can also work with transparency so you don't have to do too much of that fading um, let me take a look at that so go back to that original image now we're going to the opacity part the opacity channel of the gradient and just reduce that to zero here and reduce it zero here as well and in fact we can also reduce the intensity all across it so it's not too opaque along the across the board there right so um, we could do that smooth it a few times press and hold on that for it to be nice and smooth and then you can basically add your gradient right over that so with that you can make it so that there are gradients perhaps like for a foggy a smog layer in the middle you know bring it in there a few times uh, and, and just totally transition or transform the picture there as well. Well, enough said. Now I'm going to go back to this one here. I just wanted to show one or two more ways to, to do gradients across an existing image. Uh, let you explore that, but I want to turn this now into an animation where we actually see the snowfall. And um, I want to uh, invite you to actually go to, to this site, um, the Cool Creative Bundle. coolcreativebundle.com even if you already have pd pro uh, 5 or howler uh, there is pd pro 4 included there uh, but there's also a bunch of others and this is basically for the price of pre pd pro 4 uh, PD Pro 4, uh, you can get a couple of other tools that are absolutely awesome. One of them, I think, is a plugin for Photoshop, and then there's a couple of others that are 3D tools, standalone programs, Genetica, Great Texturing, Texture Anarchy, Anarchy there you go, uh, Digital Auto Painter, absolutely beautiful art tools. Um, so grab those. There's also the music that you hear on some of our um, videos here. 
uh, created by DJ D'Artagnan and then it is AnyFX and we will be taking a look at AnyFX because that's a plugin for Dog Waffle also. So even if you have a different version of Dog Waffle you should take a look at this just to get the AnyFX plugin. Uh, we'll take a look at that one. They have a great uh, rain filter, they have a great um, snow filter as well. We'll explore uh, the many things we can do with that. Um, so, but, but for right now, let's just finish with what we can do already in Dog Waffle itself. And um, for that, I'll, do a, I'll create an animation. And let's say this one needs to be just four seconds long. Oh, even shorter, because I'm about to go to work here. So uh, three seconds long, and uh, we'll go to the animation timeline. And there you can go and create some sort of a, a snow filter. There's a, a series of animated filters towards the bottom. And uh, you'll see it right there, animated category. And of course, the one we are looking for is the snowfall. All right, the snowfall basically falls down. If you, um, if you then want it to also go sideways a little bit, you can change the speed at which they fall down, reduce it perhaps a little bit and increase the wind speeds. That will make it go sideways, more to the right or more to the left. Uh, there's also some drifting turbulence that you might have and that would be perhaps added here. And then the size, you see it in the preview here, and the quantity, the amount of snowfall, snowflakes. Uh, then there's also the color, you can make it dark, perhaps more suitable for rain. Uh, and then you can make it whitish. All right, so what I'm going to do is have a fairly large amount of snowflakes far away. Um, so they're going to be small. And let's go render that. Now that's rendering over the entire Im image. And, and really what we should do is work with the alpha channel perhaps first to mask off the portion in the front if we want to show that blizzard blowing just in the background. So we render, so we would render those snowflakes just in the background. I'll let you do that and experiment with that. Uh, but one thing we'll definitely also want to do is have fewer snowflakes that are however big. So we do some large ones as well. And um, those will have large amount of turbulence, less of the snow, uh, the wind speed drifting sideways and uh, perhaps a little bit faster, the velocity coming down. So now we render those on top. And then that way you'll have basically a mix of uh, a lot of small snowflakes and uh, we really didn't have many here. We need to render a few more of those. Again, with the alpha channel if you want to have it mostly in the background. Uh, so you can you can mask off the part that's in the front and there we go so we have now a animated scene with some snowflakes some nice little ones in the background let's do one final render and that'll be it for today so we'll go lots of snowflakes uh, keep them small and uh, bright and let's see what else the velocity slow the wind speed really high to the right less turbulence there you go render that now, in here, you see the small preview where it's actually showing the new image. This one here is showing the old image as it's getting ready to render into it. And that's basically it. So we can go and call this a snowy day. If you want to make this a perfectly loopable uh, animation, you can go to frames and make that loopable. Fade over a couple of uh, frames at the end towards the frames at the beginning and then you will be hardly able to see if there's any snowflakes that magically disappear and fade away. Uh, the more you have on that transition, the more frames you use, the better that transition will look. All right, and that's it for today. You have a great day. That was Philip Steiger again at thebest3d.com with the Daily Dose on PD Howler.